What's up guys, Brad here. In part one of this Dirac tutorial series, I'll show you how to download and set up Dirac Live and the Dirac Live processor on your home theater PC. Then we'll go over items you'll need in order to follow along with this video, as well as running through your receiver settings to prepare for taking measurements with Dirac Live. Let's get started. So as I said in the intro, this is part one of a two-part series going over implementing Dirac Live and the Dirac Live processor by using your home theater PC. Now, that last part here is really important. While you can use this guide for going through the Dirac Live process, if you have, say, a compatible receiver or pre-pro, the primary focus here will be going through the process and applying it to the Dirac Live processor. No dedicated Dirac Live hardware is needed. Now, it is also worth mentioning that while this guide covers using the standalone Dirac Live processor, VST, VST3, and AAX plugins are included when you purchase a license. So if you want to use this in something like Pro Tools, Cubase, or Logic Pro, or you have a media player that has VST support, then that is an option for you. Now, if you aren't sure what the Dirac Live processor is, it's basically a way for you to get Dirac Live on your existing audio system without the need to purchase new hardware, provided you have a home theater PC or Mac that you use to play movies, games, and music from. All the audio coming out of your PC will be the Dirac Live corrected audio, but that correction won't apply to any other device you may use in your system. The only audio corrected will be the audio coming out of your home theater PC. Now, I am currently working on a review video for Dirac Live and the Dirac Live processor, which are part of Dirac Live's room correction suite, and that video will go over the actual software in more detail. I do want to give a huge thanks to the good folks over at Dirac for providing me with software licenses and a measurement microphone for the review, as well as these tutorial videos. Now, in full disclosure here, they aren't paying me anything to make these videos, but I do get to keep the software licenses and measurement microphone after I'm done. Now, links to the software, as well as where you can purchase a license and measurement microphone are in the description below. And finally, before we go any further, if you like what you've seen so far, be sure to hit that like button and while you're down there, click on the subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you'll never miss out on a new video. You'll also find my affiliate links in the description to items I'm about to talk about right now, so be sure to check those out too. So let's quickly run through what you'll need in order to follow along with this tutorial, but in all honesty, you're going to need these things anyway to complete the Dirac Live process. Now, in no particular order, you're going to need a home theater PC or Mac capable of running Dirac Live and the Dirac Live processor, and you'll want that PC hooked up to your receiver or pre-pro via HDMI. You'll also need a software license for the Dirac Live room correction suite, which are available to purchase in either stereo or multi-channel versions, with the stereo version offering a free 14-day trial. And you'll also need a measurement microphone compatible with the software. And Dirac recommends using the U-Mic 1 and is what I'll be using in this video. Finally, grab yourself a cheap microphone boom stand and USB extension cable from Amazon to make it easier to place the U-Mic 1 during the measurement process. So to kick things off, let's start with adjusting your receiver settings. Now, first up, make sure that if you're running any type of room correction on your receiver, that it is disabled for that input. Here, I disabled Odyssey because we don't want Dirac Live on our home theater PC trying to correct what Odyssey is doing, which could result in certain frequencies being boosted to the point where they cause distortion. Secondly, and probably one of the most important steps in this whole process, we want to make sure that our speaker settings, including size, levels, and crossovers, are set up properly before running Dirac Live on our computer. The reason for this is that Dirac Live or the Dirac Live processor does not have the ability to change any of these settings. So if things are way off with huge peaks and valleys in the frequency response, then it won't be able to correct for that. So my recommendation is to feed Dirac Live the best possible sound you can get in your room before going through the measurement process. Now that means level matching your speakers, making sure you have the best crossover selected for your speakers and your room, and that distances are within the correct range. Dirac will use its algorithm to determine delay and speaker levels based on the measurements you take within the Dirac Live software. So those things don't have to be exact, but by making sure things are set up in the best possible way beforehand, you will ensure you get the best possible outcome from the Dirac Live correction. Now, because level matching and selecting the best crossovers do require a bit of time and pretty much need a video of their own, I've already made separate video tutorials on how to do both. 
which you'll find linked in the cards above as well as in the description. And best of all, the things you'll need in order to go through those video guides, you should already have as you'll need them for running through the Dirac Live process anyway. Now once you're good to go there, let's move on to downloading and installing the Dirac Live and Dirac Live processor software. Let's head over to Dirac.com, which is their website, obviously, and we're gonna download the software that we need in order to do this whole process. So I'm gonna click on the online store button in the upper top part here, and I'll scroll down so we could see the quick start to get the Dirac Live experience thing here. So a couple things to note here. One, you will need to create a Dirac account as it says in step two right here, create a Dirac account. This is basically going to be what you log in to the Dirac Live processor with. And secondly, and probably the most important part is you will need a license in order to use the Dirac Live processor. So for stereo or multi-channel, you will need a license for those and those aren't free. So if we scroll down past all the receivers and stuff, you'll see the Dirac Live Room Correction Suite. If we click on buy on the bottom there and we scroll down a little more, you'll see they offer two versions, like I said earlier, stereo and multi-channel. Uh, the stereo version has a 14 day free trial, like I mentioned earlier, and you can also upgrade from stereo to multi-channel if you already have the stereo version. So that's something to note there. And to show you what that looks like, I'll go ahead and log in. Thank you, NordPass, not a sponsor, but if you want to sponsor me, hey, hey, I pay for it. And I'll go to my account and then go to my licenses. And you can see that I have both a Dirac processor multi-channel and Dirac processor stereo inside my licenses here. So that just means that when I log in to the Dirac Live processor a little later, I will have both of these options available to me. So we're gonna go back and click on online store again, and then we're gonna go ahead and download Dirac Live. We're gonna click that link. So on the download software page, we wanna download Dirac Live. So I'm gonna download PC, which is what I'm on. You can also use it on Mac OS. So we'll click that, it'll download it. So we'll scroll down further, Dirac Live Room Correction Suite. This is the other thing we want. So I'm gonna download it for Windows and for 64-bit systems. All right, so both of those are downloaded. I'm gonna go to my downloads folder. We'll install these real quick. So both of these are right here. I'm gonna go ahead and install the Dirac Live processor first. I don't know that it matters which order you install it in. Whatever is the top of the list, that's what we'll, we'll install first. I just leave these all checked. That's in case you wanna use it in Pro Tools or uh, Cubase or anything like that. You have that option there as well as any other media players that have VST support. We'll click on next. All the default install locations are fine. All right, so we'll click finish, that's done. And we'll also go ahead and install Dirac Live, which is what we need to get this whole thing started. So I'll agree to all that. Again, all the default stuff is fine. We'll let it run through and do its thing here. And now you can choose to have it run Dirac Live now, but I'm gonna uncheck this because after both of these are installed, what I would recommend, I always like to restart my computer anytime I install something that is going to take over the whole kind of audio pipeline or output. So well, let me do that real quick and I will be back in a moment. All right, so now that we've restarted and all of our software is installed, the first thing we wanna do is come down here and Look at our little speaker icon here. We'll right click it, open sound settings, and then on the right hand side, we'll click on sound control panel. Now basically here we want to, I can go ahead and close this in the background. We don't need that open. Here I wanna find the default device, which is my Denon AVR. That's what I have the HDMI cable hooked up to. I'm gonna click on configure. And here we just wanna make sure that the proper speaker configuration is selected. So you can go all the way up to Dolby Atmos for home theater. Just for this video, I'm gonna select 5.1 surround, but you can select any configuration you want. Just know that under 5.1 surround, you have ones with the speakers on the sides. So like my setup here, and then one with the speakers in the back of the room. So select whichever one is the proper setup for you. For this video, like I said, 5.1 surround, First one is what I want, click on next. Make sure that these are all selected if you have these. If you don't have a center, you don't have to, you don't need it selected. And then we wanna make sure that both of these are set to full range because the receiver is gonna be handling all of our base management and stuff and we don't want the computer sending a non full range signal to our system. So we'll click on next, click on finish and okay. So now after that's done, I'm gonna go and open up my Dirac processor. Now, the first time you open up the Dirac Live processor, you will see a prompt to log in with your account. That way it can pull your license from the Dirac server and unlock all the things that you have available to you. So I've already logged in here, which I forgot to record, sorry. So under options, what we want to do is if you want this to completely take over all of your audio all the time on your PC, 
then make sure to start with Windows is turned on. It will start up with Windows and you'll see this open up here. So after you decide if you want to start with Windows or not, go ahead and click on audio settings. And here we're gonna basically tell it how many channels do you have? What type of audio device type do you want it to be? And I'll get to that in a second. And then we have all of our channels down here that we can select. Basically, I have number of channels, six, 5.1, right? Five speakers and a subwoofer. Even though I have four subs, they still only count as one. So under audio device type, we can select any one of these. So the Windows Audio Exclusive Mode is the one that I prefer because I want all the audio coming out of my PC going into my receiver to be the corrected Dirac audio. So the difference between these modes is a bit confusing, but I'll try to explain it to the best of my knowledge and hopefully better than the other version of me did while recording this video. The Windows Audio setting uses a shared mode, allowing multiple applications or programs to use a sound card at the same time, while Windows Audio Exclusive Mode dedicates all the system audio resources to the Dirac processor and takes over the Windows Audio Pipeline. Windows Audio Low Latency Mode is somewhat similar to the Windows Audio setting, but supports low latency, and the ASIO setting allows for low latency and high fidelity, but will need to be controlled via third-party software like ASIO for all. Now, for my personal setup, I found Windows Audio Exclusive Mode to work the best in my situation, but some applications and programs don't support this mode. For most people, Windows Audio is the one I'd recommend starting with. If you're someone who is more familiar with these settings than I am, leave a comment down below with differences because my brain hurts a bit. And then if we go down, you'll notice all of my channels are listed here. And for the sample rate, we can just leave this at 48,000 hertz and audio buffer size, 480 samples. I believe that's a default and you really don't need to change that. And then now once we have that set up, we can exit out and then we'll come back down here and you'll notice when I hover over this, it no longer says DIN and it says virtual audio device. That means that all the sound coming from my system now is being routed through the Dirac Live processor here. Now, as far as setting up the UMic One for taking measurements, I actually covered this in a previous video where I talked about setting up the UMic One for taking measurements in Room EQ Wizard but it applies to Dirac Live as well. I'll play that clip now from the video, but if you're interested in the full video, check it out through the card above. So now we want to set up the UMic One or whatever measurement mic you're using at the position that you're normally sitting at when you're playing a game or watching a movie. And that's because we want the UMic One in that spot. We want it here where my head is at ear height and point it straight up. So what I normally do is first things first, I put the UMic One on the stand. This is just a, a standard boom stand from Amazon. I think it's the Amazon Basics brand actually. It's about 20 bucks. So I'll go ahead and loosen the mic stand here and we'll kind of move it back to around that distance there. And that's pretty good. It doesn't need to be perfect or exact, but it needs to be close. It doesn't need to be way up here. It needs to be back here around the area where your ears are. So after that, what I normally do, and it seems kind of weird, but I just put my finger on top of the mic, kind of move my head over a little bit, and then I'm like, okay, uh, this is about where my ear is. I might want to go a little higher, so I'll raise it up, and then I'll do the same thing. Just try to make sure that it's around that area, and that's perfectly fine. So again, it doesn't need to be perfect. So after that, your mic might be kind of like, you know, tilted off to the side, and what you want to go ahead and do is try to make that as level as possible and have it pointed straight up. Now that should get you all set up and ready to start the Dirac Live measurement process. Now be on the lookout for part two of this video series soon. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, a like on the video would be much appreciated. If you have any questions about the steps covered in this video, leave me a comment down below and I'll get to it if I can. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.